Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the residential buyers slash tenant representation agreement. So real quick, guys, if you are representing a buyer, somebody who's going out looking for a house, this is the form you need to get. This is also the form, if you notice right here, guys, that if you're representing a ten tenant, somebody who's looking for a rental property, okay? Um, a lot of times if you're working with apartment complexes, they have something totally different, but if you, you know, there's stuff in the MLS. So pretty much anything in the MLS that somebody's looking to rent or buy, this is what you're going to want to fill out. So I'm going to walk through this with you today. Pretty quick, pretty easy. Here's how it goes. First and foremost, we're going to go straight down the list. Most of this you can figure out. Client, okay? That's the person you're representing, okay? Um, well, put in their name. If it's the husband and wife, you're going to put in both. Address, guys, pretty self-explanatory. Put in where they currently live. Uh, and your broker. Who is your broker? Out of curiosity, guys, it is Eric Sangerhausen. Okay. And you're going to put in the address of White Line Realty, which is 562 South Highway Bath Pass. Uh, oops. Get all the way in there. Number 229. Once again, but all that's about to change, so who cares? Um, so all that's going to fill in these parts right here. And right here is Eric's brokerage information, all of that. And I explained to the, my customers at this point that technically he holds the contract with you. I will be the only one working with you. It is you, me, and the fence post. But if, uh, but according to law, the broker actually holds this agreement. So it is important that you have his phone number, his information in there. Uh, that's actually my phone number. You have to put in Eric's phone number, but that's fine. Next, uh, the appointment, obviously you can't change any there. Client grants broker the exclusive right to act as a client's real estate agent for supporting the property. That's fine. Acquire means to purchase or lease. Closing, don't know what that means. It's when it is ended. It looks like when we're all said and done. Um, and then the market area. Guys, this is important and you want to go as wide as you possibly can. Uh, means within the state of Texas and the perimeter bounding. Please do not put the entire state of Texas. You're not an expert in the state of Texas. You know, I work in Bear County a lot. Um, so I might put something like Bear, Guadalupe, and Comal County, if that's where these guys are looking, okay, for just an example. But you want to kind of put in the perimeter areas, and I kind of keep it vague. Don't put I-10 between, you know, 262. Don't, don't do that. That's too particular. But you just want to put in a market area that you will be shopping for properties with these people. Um, next thing is, if you want to just do a city, that's fine, too. The term. This thing commences today. And it ends, let's say, guys, you all give me six months to buy a house or whatever it is, guys. You're going you're gonna to come up with some term that they're comfortable with. Um, all this will auto-populate. We're going to go down a little bit further. Name any employer, relocation company, or entity that will benefit, that will provide benefits to the client when acquiring the property. This is a little bit tricky. Um, I met with one of these guys the other day that was relocating from Midland on an oil company, something or other. I had to be able to provide funds to the relocation company because I was working with them in the effort of a referral fee. You will know this long before you ever sit down with them. But this is where you will put in a relocation company or whatever it might be. Um, that, that's what goes there. You just need to make sure that everybody understands we are working with relocation companies. Next one, intermediary. Uh, this is where you need to explain to your client what intermediary means. Intermediary means that the broker is the broker for both the buyer's agent and the seller's agent. I like to have intermediary in here because I would love to be able to sell a property to another for another white line agent. Okay, They need to understand that the broker is representing both of you. Okay, if they are not comfortable with buying a white line property, then you need to say no intermediary status. Client does not wish to be shown or acquire any of the broker's listings. So, um, guys, really shoot for this one. Um, not necessarily because we want to keep it all in the family, but because you limit the number of properties you can show them if they are not okay with this. I can't. I have to take all white line properties off the market for them immediately. Um, but just walk them through and explain. Most of them are fine with it. Nobody really seems to care. So now to the next part, broker's fees. This is an interesting question. So what you're talking to your client about right here is parties agree that the broker will receive a commission calculated as following. So you know, just as well as anybody else, that the typical is 3% here. 
if I bring a buyer to the table, I should be earning 3%. I should be, okay? Um, sometimes in the MLS listing, people will put discounted commissions. I was looking at one the other day where they were only offering a 2% commission. What dictates that is the MLS. The MLS is them publishing or notifying all realtors what they're willing to pay because ultimately the listing agent is the one who collects all fees and distributes, okay? Typically they would collect 6%, this is typical, keep three for themselves and get three for the buyer's agent. It may not say that. So what you're saying here is look, you're agreeing to pay me 3%. If we go buy a house that's only 2%, you are agreeing to cover the other 1%. Now, Guys, it's up to you if you really want to hold people to this. It's up to you. Um, I never do. If I show them a house that's 2%, I just kind of bite the bullet. Unless they've just been absolutely, I, I can't imagine a scenario, but guys, you, you, this is how you CYA on this, okay? So you, you got to find out uh, what kind of client you're working with, but you just put 3% because you do have to fill something in here. Um, what Ryan was doing and what I'm going to start doing, because I was talking to him about this, is he put 6%. Now, you typically don't get 6% uh, from a MLS listing. Where you would get 6% from is if you were showing them a new build. A lot of times, these people that are building, these big companies that build lots of homes, will offer a 6% commission because they don't have to pay their listing agents because it's a little bit of a different structure. Ryan always put 6% in here. That's what I'm going to start doing. I'm just simply going to explain to them, hey, guys, just in case we run into it, I need to provide documentation showing that you are willing to pay me the 6%. I'm not going to hold you to it. If they only pay me 3 that's fine. I'm not going to make you pay me the other 3%. There's going to be a little bit of trust here, guys, when you do that. But it will, if the builder ever wants to see this document, it's going to help. Okay. The next one in line 2 is the client agrees to lease... Uh, to lease a property, check one box only. So you can do, you know, whatever percent of one month's rent or whatever percent of all rents paid over the time of the lease. Typically, um, it's about one, the first month's rent is what you get paid. So I would say 100% of the month's rent. Again, you can talk to them about this. Pretty much whatever's in the MLS is what I'm going to ask for. Um, if it's, they say, Hey, we'll pay you $250 or one month's rent or whatever. I, I always tell everybody, look, I don't get paid a lot on finding you a rental. And you'll notice this is if you start looking through the MLS, they pay very little. This is where I will negotiate with them saying, Hey, look, you're looking for an apartment for a thousand dollars a month. I really can't help you for less than $500. Um, and a lot of those apartments don't pay that. So would you agree to make up the difference up to 500 bucks? And they'll probably say yes or no, right? You got to you got to negotiate this. This is a conversation you have to have with the people. Um, this is the only time I will really hold anybody to this because finding rental properties, man, it, they are cheap when it comes to paying out commissions on that. So I, I will hold them to it, saying, "Hey, look, if you want to go look at fifty properties and spend my entire weekend, I'm not doing that for two hundred fifty bucks. I'll do it for five hundred. If they only pay me two fifty, you got to cover the other fifty. So uh, that's where that does come in handy. So we're going to go down. You can read through all of this stuff. Construction. If the client uses broker services to procure and negotiate the construction improvements of a property that the client owns or may acquire, client ensures the broker will receive the client from the clients or contractors at the time of construction suitable a fee equal to. Again, guys, are they looking for new construction? So if they are looking for it or they want you to go negotiate for them the construction of improvements to a property that the client owns or may acquire. So this is if you're they're asking you to go find contractors. This is a very slippery slope. If you are new to the industry, do not do this. You allow them to go shop on their own. If you are comfortable doing this, you better make dang sure that they are licensed, insured, and all that. So I will help you shop for some construction quotes, but it's going to cost you 500 bucks or whatever, a fee equal to whatever it is you negotiate, guys. Again, slippery slope. Avoid that if you can. Um, any other commissions that you have talked to them through? Hey, if you can find a house that'll sell me the boat, I'll give you 500 bucks too. Okay. 
if a boat is procured with the property, I'll get an extra 500 bucks. You need to put all of that in there because title is going to want to see that. Uh, again, guys, slippery slope. Please don't touch this. Um, next one, protection period. Protection period means that the time starting the day after the agreement ends and continues for blank days, not later than 10 days after the agreement ends, broker may send client written notices identifying the properties called to the client's attention. So here's the deal. Let's say you work with these guys all the way up until March 30 for, oops, I'm going to be here. Sorry. I work with these clients all the way up until March 31st. I said, give me six months. Let's see if we can find you something. If on March 31st, you have not found them anything, but that last week you showed them like 15 properties and they decided to just wait until that came out. And then they went to that person and said, Hey, can we buy it straight from you or whatever it is? Anything that you have shown them, you still should get credit on because you were the procuring cause. You made them aware of it. Typically here, guys, I put 30 days. Um, so what's going to happen, though, guys, is if you're, if this contract does end on March 31st, 10 days after that, the broker has got to send a written notice identifying the properties called to the attention. So everything you showed them, you need to say, hey, look, I showed you X, Y, Z, L, M, N, O, P, all of these houses. Your brokers got to send a letter to the client saying, hey, we showed you these. If for the next 30 days you choose to buy one of them, we're still going to get our commission. Okay. Uh, put a protection period. I like 30 days. Uh, kind of a standard in my opinion. You can put whatever you want, though, whatever you're willing to negotiate. Next one to fill out. This is so silly. I don't even know why this is a thing. County. Amounts payable to broker must be paid in cash, in Guys, we are located in Guadalupe County and Bear County, whatever, wherever they possibly could close. Uh, I'd say Guadalupe County because that's where our brokerage office is. So we will say, hey, look, you got to pay us in Guadalupe County. So it really doesn't matter because everywhere in Texas, we use the same money. I think this is an old school thing that's been around for a long time. I really don't know what that is for. So the next thing, addenda. Addend these are things that you're adding to the contract or to the um the contract or things you're supposed to give to people. I usually take all of this stuff with me, protecting your home from mold, information concerning property insurance, general information in the notice of buyers and sellers, protect your family from lead, information about special flood hazards, get your home inspection. Guys, all of these are available from Trek. You can take all of these on them and say, check, 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 check. Look, I gave you all of these forms. If you don't want to give it to them, you don't have to, but the one that you cannot and I repeat, cannot uncheck is the information about brokerage services. That is because they should sign that first. They should sign that before you even talk to them about this. So it should already be done. Uh, special provisions. Again, special provisions right here, guys. You should not put anything in special provisions without talking to your broker, your supervising agent, and or a lawyer. Because this is a legal binding contract and this needs to be legal speak. Um, you cannot put in here special provisions. I promise to look for a house with a cat. You, know, you can't do that guys. Um, that's not legal speak. So just leave that blank. Next up, we got to get this thing signed by the broker. So Eric's my broker. What, what's his license number? Five nine. So I can't remember exactly what it is. And then, but here's the interesting thing. There's the broker and you can have the broker sign this agreement if you want, but you can also sign this as an authorized agent of the broker. So I will put broker's name here and I will put his license number. I will put my name here and I can sign this for him saying, because I, I work for Eric, that's one of the agreements. I can sign it for him. So I will sign here as an associated signature of the authorized agent of the broker. So you can sign this and date it but you need to make sure they understand that it's technically Eric's deal. Then you want the client signatures here. If there's two of them, have them sign both of them. And that's it, guys. The residential buyer's tenant representation agreement's pretty simple. It's pretty straightforward. The, I touched on the only things that are kind of weird. Um, I've got to be honest. This is not binding them for six months. All they have to do is send an email. They have to put something in writing saying, hey, I don't want to work with you anymore. Great. But... What I would do, guys, 
is if they decide, you know, I put this one in until March 31st. Let's decide on uh, October 15th, they tell me they don't want to work with me anymore. Great. That's fine. But what you do want to make sure you have is you still have that 30-day protection period. Some people are very, very tricky. They'll use you to get into a few houses, cancel the agreement with you, and then try and go get it at a discount because they don't have to pay you. Guys, that's why this is important. Um, it's not binding. They don't have to work with you for six months. Uh, I can't remember where in here it says, but it, they just have to notify you in writing that they don't want to work with you anymore. And, and that's what it is. It's in here somewhere. But get one of these filled out, guys. This is what I do when I go sit down with somebody. So right after I do this, we're going to sign an IBS. We're going to sign this. I'm going to give them all the documentation that I think are important. And then I'm also going to ask them, okay, let's talk about what you're looking for. Are you looking for... Um, uh, three bedrooms, two baths, 1,200 square, you know, you get all the particulars so you can send them up on an MLS search. By the way, you do need to have one of these signed. I know it seems like it's kind of moot because they can cancel at any time, but we cannot sign your brokerage, uh, your commission disbursement if you do not have this filled out because you did not tell us that they have not agreed to pay you jack if they have not filled this out, Okay. Now, we're not going to come back, and if you put 6% here and you're only getting 3%, we're not going to throw a fit about it. That's that's just bad practice. We're not going to. But you have to have this signed if you want your commission disbursement signed. Okay? Do not do this after the fact. Don't go, okay, we got the signing. We're three days from closing. I need you to sign this too. Bad idea. Dangerous habit to get in, guys. Very dangerous habit to get in. Because, again, if they try to take advantage of you, you have no protection because you never had them sign this at the beginning. So, guys, all of this paperwork, yeah, it, it's a lot of paperwork. We're constantly filling out paperwork, but it's designed to protect you and to protect the client. So we just want to make sure everybody's on the same page, and that's exactly how I explain it to them. Guys, I'm not trying to pull a fast one on you. This is not me trying to do anything. I just want to make sure that you're protected and I'm protected and we all know what's going on. Um, I also tend to send this in DocuSign, guys because I want them to have a copy of it. Um, but I will take it to uh, appointments as well. So make up, you know, figure out how you want to go about doing it. Uh, what I tend to do is I'll fill this out with them, have them sign it uh, at the table, and I'll come and put it all into DocuSign and send it to them again. And I'm telling them, hey, I need you to sign this one more time so you have a copy of it, just reference it. Um, so there you go, guys. However you want to go about doing it, if you've got any questions, you know how to find me.